As long-term care professionals, our jobs make a difference. It's not always easy. Each day can bring new challenges. But the effort we put in can be life-changing for someone's parent, grandparent, sibling, or partner. Threats to our residents' health are changing, and we must adapt to protect them. Multidrug resistant organisms, or MDROs, are a known threat to nursing home residents. MDROs are resistant to multiple antibiotics or antifungals, meaning the drug has lost its effectiveness and cannot stop the germ. One way to protect our residents from getting hard to treat infections is to stop the spread of MDROs in our nursing home facilities. Unfortunately, many of these germs are often found in our facilities, on surfaces, and even on the hands of residents and staff. Residents can even have the resistant germ in or on their body without showing any signs or symptoms of active infection. This is a condition known as colonization. In fact, more than 50% of our nursing home residents may already be colonized with an MDRO. And because MDROs can spread undetected, we could unintentionally spread these germs when we provide high contact resident care. This puts our residents at risk for colonization or a serious infection. Thankfully, enhanced barrier precautions are a way we can help reduce this risk. Enhanced barrier precautions, or EBP, are among many infection prevention and control practices that we should use when interacting with residents who are at higher risk of infection. We should use EBP for residents who have wounds, indwelling medical devices, such as central venous lines and urinary catheters, or those who have been colonized by or infected with an MDRO. However, if residents need to be on contact precautions, use those instead of EBP. So, how do we use enhanced barrier precautions? Much of the care that we provide for residents is close contact and hands-on, the type of care that is likely to spread MDROs. We should use EBP during the following resident care activities. Dressing, bathing, transferring, changing linens, assisting with toileting, accessing indwelling medical devices, and providing wound care. So, before we enter a resident's room marked with an EBP sign, or before we engage in high contact resident care activities, we need to gather all needed supplies and materials, clean our hands, and correctly put on a gown and gloves. Once we have completed our care, we need to safely remove and throw away our gown and gloves in the room and clean our hands again before moving on to provide care for another resident. When we use these precautions for every resident who is at higher risk, we can help reduce or even stop the spread of MDROs. Enhanced barrier precautions may be new to many nursing home staff and will require each of us to use the mindset that, as soon as we encounter a resident with a wound, indwelling medical device, or MDRO, EBP should begin. By following this guidance, along with other important infection prevention and control practices, we can reduce the need for isolation, providing our residents with a better quality of life. This is a step in the right direction, balancing safety and quality of life while decreasing the spread of MDROs. Thank you for taking this step with us.